Hello guys, welcome to Java Core Programming Course. This is section 2 and lecture 9. Today's agenda loops, for loop, and enhanced for loop, and nested loops. Let's begin. Loops. In Java programming, loop is a sequence of instructions that repeatedly executes a statement or a block of statements until a certain condition is met to stop execution. Java supports four kinds of loops, basically two types of code loops, two are the variation of our loop and two are the variation of while loop. So total four loops. For loop, this is a standard conventional loop. Enhanced for loop is for collections like arrays or lists or other similar collections. We will discuss this more in future lectures. While loop. While loop is also a conventional loop. It, it is used when you do not know how many times you have to run the statement or block of statement. Do while loop. Do while loop is the variation of while loop. It executes the body of the loop before the condition is evaluated. Generally, a loop has two parts. Loop body, statement or statements to execute repeatedly. And control mechanism. To control the loop repetition and how many times it's supposed to run. This is control mechanism. If this mechanism is not there, the loop will run infinitely. So it has, we have to control the execution. So for loop, this is the flow chart. This is how it works. Start, initialize, loop condition checked. And if the condition is true, it executes the statements. Then it increment or decrement and go back to the loop condition to evaluate it for the next iteration. Once this becomes false, it go to the next statement and the loop ends. So traditional for loop is like this. For initialization condition, increment and decrement uh, within the body of the loop there are statements if there is a single statement you can skip using curly braces so the loop body loop body is enclosed within the curly braces if there is a single statement you can omit braces loop control mechanism is a, is within the parenthesis here starting from here up to here and it has three components. Initialization. Here we will initialize the loop invariant. This is the condition. This is evaluated for each iteration. If this is true, the body is executed. If this is false, the body is not executed. Increment and decrement. Here we will control the loop invariant that we initialized here. We increase it and decrease it. And based on this increment and decrement, this condition is evaluated true or false. Loops start with initialization. Condition is checked. If evaluated true, loop body executes. Then the increment and decrement part is executed. After the increment and decrement, loop condition is checked. This process is repeated until the condition is true. So this loop is used when you normally know in advance how many times it has to execute. So that is why we uh, it we also call it counting for loop. Enhanced for loop. Enhanced for, move, for loop is especially designed for collections or arrays. We will work on this loop in future lectures. So it works like this. We start declare the loop identifier within the parenthesis of for, for loop and it checks end of collection is reached. If the end of collection is re not reached, it, it goes to execute the next item and execute statements. And if end of collection is reached, it go to next statement and stop the execution. So enhanced for loop is introduced in Java since Java 1.5. When the Java generics are introduced in the Java. Java generics are introduced in uh, Java 
this is a similar loop as as the for loop in c sharp and vb.net and for in loop in python only works with arrays and collections we study them in future lectures okay this is the general syntax in the general syntax for loop parenthesis start data type identify and colon this colon refer to collection then executes the statements this data type is initialized here then the collection is checked whether it is reached end of the collection or not if not execute the statements identifier is refer to the object in the collection and this is current object within the collection during the iteration of this for loop this loop executes once for each element in the collection or array now the nested for loops we can nest loops loop within a loop any loop can be nested into another loop we can nest for loop into while loop while loop into for loop and similarly do while loop nested loops are commonly used for sorting handling multi dimensional arrays and drawing different shapes and processing other mathematical logics to nest to test the nested loops i will show you different programs like display a triangular shape a box of some character computing a number raised to its power etc or some other programs just to practice the nested loops and this is general syntax for example i have nested two for loops here this is first out of the for loop initialize condition increment decrement parenthesis and within the parenthesis there is a another loop same syntax this loops runs for example n times and for each iteration of this loop this loop will execute and this is how we nest the different loops and for this loop we can use while did or do while and we can also use while and do while here and inside it for loop so any loop can be nested into other loop thank you guys let's practice the concepts hello guys let's practice for the concepts of lecture 9 for loop enhanced for loop and nested loop let's begin let's create files first java class lecture 9 for loop lecture 9 enhanced for loop and last one lecture 9 nested loops okay we begin let's format the files and lecture 9 for loop and this one this one this one let's begin with the for loop so add let's add main method and for loop is a conventional loop is also called counting loop for example we have int x is equal to 0 x is less than equal to let's start with 1 is equal to 10 and x plus plus it has three components initialization and this is the loop condition it will check x is less than equal to 10 and if it is true it execute the body of the for loop and once it is completed it increment the x loop invariant and come back into this position to check for the x position against 10 so let's print it out 
वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स सो दिस लूप विल एग्जीक्यूट टेन टाइम्स ओके वी कैन एड डिफरेंट ब्रांचिंग इन साइड दी लूप टू चेक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन केस वी वॉन्ट टू प्रिंट ओनली even numbers only even numbers okay if x percentage of 2 is equal to 0 and this condition will filter the numbers and display only even numbers ओके दीज आर ओनली इवन नंबर प्रिंटेड हेयर बिकॉज ऑफ दिस कंडीशन सो दिस वे वी कैन राइट द लूप लूप कंट्रोल इट विद ओवर कंडीशन एंड एग्जीक्यूट द लूप बॉडी एंड फिल्टर आउट ओवर रिजल्ट सेम वे वी कैन राइट डिफरेंट लॉजिक बेस्ड ऑन ओवर रिक्वायरमेंट्स लेट्स मूव टू एनहेंस्ड लूप let's add main method now enhanced for loop only works with arrays and collections so let's declare an array i will we will study array in future lectures so integer array int array is equal to let's say 2 3 9 11 and 15 okay now we have two ways to iterate this array for example we can use conventional index base access and counting loop counting loop so we can do this index i0 i is less than array dot length i plus plus and we print here let's say array 0 is equal to percentage d and this is i array i this will print the subscript of the array and its associated value let's test it array 0 is 2 and array 1 2 3 4 these values now let's use an enhanced loop for integer i and this is the syntax for this one s out and value of let's remove the because we do don't have access to the index now so array array element is stored inside it directly and we can print it let's print it like percentage d and i enhanced follow okay so over array is printed without accessing the individual subscript element so uh, this i this loop basically works like this it iterates the array store the current element into this variable and this variable is directly accessible within the loop body and this points to the current element in first iteration it point to 2 second iteration it points to 3 in the same way it iterates entire array and store these elements one by one into this variable this loop can be very useful especially while working with the collection objects for example array list list and sets and other things i will 
use this loop frequently when I will make the lectures for Java collections. Stay tuned, they will be posted soon. Okay, now very important nested loops. Let's add main method. Okay, nested loop. A loop within and other loop. We can do lot of things using nesting. Loops can be nested to any extent. L let's draw box of let's say characters. So int size is equal to 10 for int i 0, i is less than size, i plus plus. And we are nesting another loop inside the for loop. Int, int j is equal to 0, j is less than size, j plus plus. And we print this character 10 times on a single line. And we print new line after execution of this loop, the inner loop. This is outer loop. What this will do? This will print 10 characters at a line and make a box of it. See. So we can control the output. Let's draw a triangle. Keep everything like this and just copy this, these two loops and place a condition here. For example, we can do if j is less than or equal to i. It only prints as many numbers as many times as the upper loop variant so this will print a triangle see this is a triangle printed here right triangle okay we can uh, let's say print a hollow box so let's print let's copy all this place it here hollow box ok so what we need we need to place different conditions to control the output so first condition is if i is equal to 0 so it must print the first line or i is less than size minus 1 so this will print the Top, li top line, top row and the bottom row. Okay. Now R. Let's print it first. And we will see what is the output. I. I is equal to 0. Or I is less than. Sorry. I is equal to this one. And we print. So, and otherwise we print the new line. Okay, let's see what happens. So, we have this printed. Top row and the bottom row. Now what we want is print this column and print the last column. And keep the center space is empty. Okay, so if uh, let's say
let's mix the conditions and j one minute so what we need is we need to print this one and between the empty spaces so we will make it like r j is equal to 0 whenever j is equal to 0 print this line this character will be printed whenever j is equal to 0 next condition is or j is equal to size minus 1 this will print the this column last column and otherwise print space okay run it Mm, one minute okay run it so this is printed like this hollow box now let's add another thing we will add a cross this is hollow box and copy it and a hollow box with cross we will put a character in the diagonals so we will add condition or i is equal to j okay so what will happen with this run the file So this is this has printed the diagonal. Now we will add another condition to print the this diagonal. So this diagonal will be equal to uh, i is equal to sorry uh, so we need another condition to print the other diagonal. So j is equal to size minus i minus 1 ok I think this will do the trick run file yes it is done so we can print the hollow screen with the cross with this logic this is a composite logic and with this practice you can learn a lot about how the loops work and how you can control the loop with the conditions. Thank you guys. That is all for today. And I hope you have learned nested loops, loop, for loop and enhanced loops. And if you have any question, drop me a message. I will answer. And keep practice. Practice will make you a best coder. See you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Please subscribe to the channel and promote the content. Have a good day.